and welcome to the Living Fullness Podcast. I'm Stina. And I'm Father Burns. And on this episode, we're going to have a chat about the virtue of modesty. If you're new here, we chat about the virtues, relationships, making comments on the culture, and we discuss living the Christian life. And we are very grateful to have you with us. All right, we're going to talk about the M word. The M word. <laughs> Murder? Well, no, probably it is probably worse, but <laughs> this word tends to make people cringe. Mantras. Modesty. No, not mantras. Modesty. Oh, right. Modesty. right. Sorry. <laughs> the other M word. The other M word, right. <laughs> it tends to make people cringe, I think, because we've had so many people try and speak into this space. Mm. And it's always kind of gone to extreme ends in some way. Even if the person who's spoken about it hasn't meant for it to be extreme, yeah, yeah, it kind of gets yeah. taken to extreme yeah, ends. Yeah. And we become too rigid in trying to understand yeah. how to practice modesty. So I guess the first thing to know for this conversation is that modesty isn't, we're not talking about it just in terms of attire. Right. So it's not just about what a person wears. Yep. Modesty as a virtue has to be more than just behavior. So we're talking mm. about the disposition of our hearts. Good. So that means that anything that kind of comes from the place of our heart needs to inform the kinds of speech that we have and the kinds of behavior mm. that come from it, mm. which includes obviously our attire. Yes, absolutely. So I can recall when the two of us went to Tathra mm. for a conference as speakers. Yep. I remember when we arrived and we'd sort of met with the organizers, you know, done all of that, tried to kind of settle in and get comfortable. Neck minute, because I was off with the women, you were off with the men. Neck minute, I think we both kind of found ourselves having walked into a bit of a disaster. <laughs> oh, yes. And what we learned very quickly was that there'd been a bit of a mishap <laughs> that had happened. So this was a Christian event. The participants were all informed that, you know, at this event, everyone was to pack their swimsuits, a pool would be available, but to take modesty considerations into play. And they'd been very specific in the guidelines that were given for what was deemed appropriately modest as swimwear. So for women, that meant a certain kind of attire and for men, that meant a certain kind of attire. Mm. For men, that meant that they had to wear a kind of shirt some kind of a swim shirt of any kind, but they yep. had to be covered. What ended up happening, what we walked into <laughs> was some very disgruntled young people because they had just come from the pool. And for the women, you can probably speak about what happened for the men, but for the women, they were all very upset because they had just witnessed some of their leaders yep. <laughs> who had been in the pool without a shirt on. Yep. And they were furious. They felt like there was double standard at play. These were also leaders, so they should have known better. And instead of owning up to it, <laughs> these people had also tried to argue their way out of it. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the most uncomfortable way. It was. <laughs> this was not what we were there to speak about. We weren't there to speak. Oh, I certainly was, wasn't there to speak about It was extraordinary. It was, about so it was, just it like, was extraordinary. Did we <laughs> I rocked up, and it was, Father, Father, I'm so glad you're here. It's like, mm, <laughs> why? No one has ever uttered those words when I've walked through a door. Why? <laughs> What's going on here? And uh, uh, so uh, he's, uh, it's like, oh, look, we're, we're having this argument. You'll be able to settle it for us. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, 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 sunshine, you got yourself into this, into this mess. It's... Uh, uh, and uh, the only thing that's going to get you out of this mess is a uh, heartfelt apology. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, so. I mean, in, in that regard, there was a – there was an obvious guideline that had been placed upon everyone who was present. Yeah. And some of those people had adhered to those guidelines and others hadn't. Yeah. And so, obviously, yeah. there was hurt in that because, yep. hey, we were all – we all agreed to be respectable. We all agreed to respect right. each other. right. right. And then there was people who chose not to, yep. not to go by those guidelines. Yep. So that's one level of hurt. Mm. Then the other level of hurt was not acknowledging right. that that had taken place, right. and right. instead trying to kind of fob it off or trying to play it down like it didn't matter. But also for the girls, it became very clear that it turned into a bit of an attack 
on women as well. Right. It kind of almost started to take this turn of, well, it matters more for you women to right, be right, covered up right, than it yes. does for us yep, yep. men to be covered up. Yep. So then that became like another An- third a- Another movie. whole thing. Yeah, yeah sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Just that, that line alone. That line alone of, well, it's more important for you women to, to, to mm. be covered up than it is for, for, for us men to be covered up actually does represent a profound misunderstanding of what modesty is, right? Mm. Uh, because as you indicated at the beginning of the episode, modesty is is more fundamentally than, than a set of rules. Modesty is a disposition of heart. Uh, and, and and so it's actually important for both men and women for, 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 for a variety of reasons. Uh, but uh, it's also this idea... Is, is based on a flawed notion that goes something like this. Men don't need to learn modesty. <laughs> Women need to learn modesty. Mm. Men don't need to learn modesty because they already know what it is that sets them off in terms of sexual temptations, mm-hmm. whereas women need to learn modesty uh, because they don't know. The reason for this is that men are more sensual creatures, whereas women are more sentimental creatures. Now, now that if you just turn, if you just tuned in at that point, <laughs> at that point, rewind, <laughs> rewind, <laughs> be kind and rewind, and 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 go 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 back a few seconds. Uh, that's not what I think. So, this this is 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 completely untrue. Uh, yes, on average, men will tend to be more sensual. Yes, on average, women will tend to be more sentimental. But every significant medical study uh, has, has has really shown that men and women experience sexual attraction virtually in the same way, uh, neurologically. Yeah. Uh, but that it, it's interpreted dif- differently, of that there is no doubt. But but in terms of the experience of external stimuli causing sexual attraction, that. That's experienced in a fairly similar fashion, both in men and women. The jury's in on that, so uh, so there's 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 no question about that. So as for so I, I don't think that's that's a particularly sane uh, approach to it. That's that's based in reality in any way, and uh, and, and it does reduce modesty down to clothing, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and and down to well, we just have to do it for each other, and 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 particularly women looking out for men, and uh, it's it's all just a bit skewed, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think largely unhelpful. So let's, to try and broaden our understanding of modesty, let's go into a bit of a scriptural mm-hmm. a scriptural place to see where we go yeah. uh, and then we might be able to broaden things from there. Yeah, okay, all right. So if we look at what happens in Genesis then, I think it's really interesting we hear when the fall happens that God clothes Adam and Eve in skins. Mm. And I think that's very easily overlooked. <laughs> yeah. Because what does that mean? If if God's chosen to clothe Adam and Eve in skins, where did he get the skins from? Mm-hmm. Now, God could just, you know, magically almost make skins appear, right? <laughs> he could. Magically. Well, he could. <laughs> He's God. Magically. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of out of thin air. It's just kind of here. Yeah, okay, okay. Yep. But that's not what we see him do throughout the earlier parts of Genesis. We see him create, cre- well, all of creation building up to male and female. And from each of those stages, we see new and wonderful things come about. And yet we see here with the fall, in choosing to clothe Adam and Eve in skins, he's had to have killed. Right. He's had to have taken some kind of animal and slaughtered it for the sake of Adam and Eve. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, So if nothing else then, that says, even if we look at, in, just for this moment, even if we look at modesty then in terms of attire alone, we can see there's a level of seriousness here that God's placing. If he's willing to kill his own creation for the sake of another creation, that says something about the value of clothing that, or, or the value that now exists right, for clothing right. after the fall. Right, post, post, post-lapsarian yeah. or post-fall, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think also we can sometimes look at what happens with Adam and Eve after the fall in choosing to try and cover themselves up in somewhere, Mm. hide away Mm. in somewhere. We can look at that and go, well, that was just a poor reaction. That was just like they were just so filled with guilt and shame that they just chose to kind of hide away from each other and that was a bad negative reaction to have. Mm. And parts of it, yes, hiding away from God is not a positive 
reaction at all, but to choose to cover themselves in some way, to mm. be not seen by the other when they recognize that they were naked. Yes. After the fall is actually a good thing. Mm. And I think the only way that comes about is for a person to be able to look within and say, and it's certainly I would imagine for Adam and Eve, they would have had to have looked within themselves to recognize first, oh, my intentions are not well ordered. Right. Now, maybe those weren't the thoughts that came to mind, but they would have certainly had a moment of recognizing something's different. Right. I don't see this other person the way that I used to. And then comes the second thought, oh, maybe they don't see me the same way either. Mm. And so then use comes into play. Right. So then naturally, yes, a good response to have is to cover yourself for the sake of protecting your own dignity, right. but also so that you're shielding the other person from yeah. committing that yeah. sin as well. Yep. Yep. 100%. So then it's God's mercy, really. That, that's what that clothing really signifies. The skins in scripture is yeah. God's mercy coming through going, okay, I know. I know. Okay. Now that we've had the fall, we know sins entered. I'm going to help you yeah. here. Yeah. 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 Wear this because, I mean, if they're wearing fig leaves, he... <laughs> <laughs> that stuff is itchy. That's <laughs> like that's <laughs> all kinds of bad. Yes, so. yes, that's not going to be helpful. No. <laughs> um, and, and no, I think you're, 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 you're spot on. Use enters the equation. They realise that things are not as they should be uh, and, and, and God recognises, you know, look, you've, you've messed up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fix it. Here's how I start to fix it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think this, this, this very beautifully demonstrates that modesty at its core is, in fact, the disposition of heart, mm -hmm. right? That, that Adam and Eve had that disposition of heart prior to the fall. Yeah. Post-fall, they no longer possess that disposition of heart. And, uh, and, and so and, and why I emphasise disposition here is that I think what something you alluded to at the beginning of the episode is that modesty tends to be reduced down to a series of rules, mm. uh, rules and regulations, which state, you know, your dress must be this long and it must have uh, this width across the shoulders and it must have this and it must have that and it must be this. Look, I think that's largely unhelpful. I think that's largely unhelpful to uh, – not that rules are bad. I don't, I'm, I, I'm not here saying yeah. that rules are bad. I'm, nor am I here saying that there is no objective standard in terms of modesty because there has to be. There is always an objective standard. But I think it's also important to be aware uh, that the, the objective standard and the objective truth that rests under that standard are not always the same. By that I mean the objective truth which must always be brought to mind is that the human person is meant to be loved. That's the core truth which yeah. modesty seeks to protect, right? Yeah. That's the core reality there. To have a disposition of heart which is modest is to recognise that I am made for love and this person is made for love and therefore there is a way of being treated and treating others that accords with that reality. Yeah. And, and dress figures into that as does speech, as does uh, the way that we, we see others. It's, 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 that's all part of modesty. Now, the, the standards by which modesty is lived will vary from culture to culture. Yeah. And, and at this point, I hear everyone saying, oh, Father, you're a relativist. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not a relativist. In the early to mid-1900s, what is worn today and is considered modest would probably not have been considered modest, right? What was worn in the in the the fifties would not have been considered modest for the early nineteen hundreds. What was considered modest for the early nineteen hundreds would not have been considered modest in the eighteen hundreds. So yeah, modesty will will shift and change according to uh, according to, to, to different different eras. But the principle has to always be the same. The principle being that that. The person is never used, always loved, always cherished. That's the objective principle that must always be held. Uh, and over various epochs, that will change and shift, right? Uh, and the, sh the same is true for, for, for cultures. What's modest for one culture will not be modest for another culture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and C.S. Lewis does a really good job of speaking about this in mere Christianity. Uh, and he makes the point that, that you know, he's, he's writing in the, 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 the 40s and 50s, 
he makes the point that that he believes that the great re- what he calls the great relaxation uh, is a very good thing. That that from what was considered modest, you know, sort of dresses right down to the ankle. Well, now it's it's it, the, the the dress is a bit more comfortable. The dress is a bit more, you know, and 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 so he, he says, well, you know, it's it's not always one size fits all. Mm. Modesty will shift and change. The standards will shift and change culturally, and yeah. that's okay. Uh, but they will always keep to the basic principle that the person must be protected. Uh, the person must be loved and cherished. And anything yeah. which leads to the opposite of that is will, will be immodest. Mm. Uh, so there will be rules, so to speak, that emerge from that for, from culture to culture. Uh, and and it's good for us to be aware of what they are, yeah. uh, and and to act according to them. But it's not the rules themselves that are the foundation of modesty, uh, and it's also unhelpful then to be yep. overly prescriptive with those yep. rules Absolutely. and to say here's what you need to wear in order to be modest. Because what will wind up happening is that people will think that it's just a a, a rule based scenario rather than being a, a personalist based reality. So I think in that way. To focus excessively on rules uh, is 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 probably going to lose the point of what modesty actually is. That it's actually this external manifestation. Because the truth is that two people could be dressed to the nines and still be utterly immodest. Yep. Right. So it's more than just the clothing that that that, yeah. that one wears. And and that makes perfect sense when you think about modesty as a virtue. Yes. Because that's how all the virtues yes. work. So if if we were to replace modesty with the virtue of fortitude we couldn't give you prescriptive guidelines on what fortitude looks like and expect you to use that in every single situation because one it's not going to suit every circumstance and two it's not going to suit every person so it's it's ludicrous to then go well we can do that with modesty when we can't do it with any of the other virtues because it takes away like you said it takes away from the actual virtue itself if we were to just make it a whole bunch of rules It has to make sense for the culture that it's in as well right, right, and for the time that it's in as well. That doesn't necessarily mean that it relies on that particular culture to tell a person what modesty should look like, no. but that it needs to make sense in that context. In that context, that's right. If you go to the Patreon page, I'll tell a story about John Paul II. Okay, and, cool. Uh, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, cool, uh, cool, cool, cool. But uh, you, you know, I, I, think, I think that's exactly right. It has to be culturally, uh, culturally sound. Uh, and, and I think where dress aims to shock, where it aims to be rude, where it aims to uh, to get a response, that's when you know it's going into immodesty. And, and that's also where we know that it's moved away from the virtue of modesty when exactly. the intention is also exactly. wrong. You also know, yeah, where the intention is wrong. Also, where the parts of the body which are considered to be sort of sexual and, and, and attractive yep. are displayed, yep. then, then we know that there's something amiss there as well. Yep. Where those, those, those parts are, are, because for different cultures, there will be different differing values around that. Yeah. Uh, in the Western culture, we have very particular standards around that, and they've always kind of, kind of hung on. The standard of, of the, the dress standards of modesty will also reflect uh, what parts of the body are deemed to be uh, particularly attractive by culture and also particularly of a sexual nature of the culture as well. Uh, and, and that will also uh, guide various, the ways that we dress to be modest. Yes. Right? Yeah. That will guide the ways that we dress to be modest mm. is, is how does the culture view that? Yeah. And, and how do I respect mm. myself and others in the context of this culture? Mm. Mm. I just want to go back to something else that you were also saying before. Modesty as a virtue isn't just about mitigating for sin. It's not just about the fact that we have a fallen human nature and we have a tendency towards sin. So modesty doesn't, isn't just there to kind of go, oh, well, this is how we kind of accommodate for the fact that sin exists. Modesty as a virtue is meant to be so much more than that. It's supposed to, if as a true virtue, it's supposed to, because of Christ, it's supposed to allow us to live more fully. It's supposed to allow us to live more whole. And it's supposed to allow us to show that to others, that wholeness, that completeness that we have in and through Christ. Yeah, just in and through Christ. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
Absolutely. Uh, it, it establishes a good. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's aimed towards the acquisition yeah. of a true good. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it, it must be more than just mitigation for evil. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So in terms of, of modesty for the genders, for men and for women, yep. let me say just a few, maybe, maybe a couple of, of points. Firstly, um, in the spirit of not being too prescriptive, how do I think, act, speak, and dress? Are my thoughts modest? Do I speak modestly? Or do I engage in jokes which are inappropriate? Uh, do I act in a modest fashion? Um, uh, so, you know, for, for, uh, for gentlemen, um, you know, do I... Think modestly. Do I uh, do I speak modestly? Do I behave modestly? Do I do I you know interact with other people in a modest fashion? Uh, you know, my my do I make sure that my my eyes are looking where they should be looking? All that sort of yeah. thing, right? And and, and also, uh, do I do I dress modestly? And if I can say, the whole trend where pants are falling halfway down one's 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 waist, gentlemen, that needs to take a like you yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, and, and do I dress appropriately, right? So, so for instance, at Mass, gentlemen, if I can encourage you, wear a tie. Come to Mass, suit and tie, on a Sunday. Come to Mass, suit and tie, look schmick, right? If you were to go and see King Charles... Even if it was 40 degrees, you'd be done up to the nines, right? Well, you're going to see the king of King Charles, right? You, you, you're about to go and see the king of kings. So I reckon... And you're about to receive him. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's the, the, the whole point is then, well, I need to, I need to dress appropriately. Yeah. I'm about to engage in. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gentlemen, suit and ties. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and with that too, there's appropriateness that comes into play with yeah. that as well. Because I'm thinking about women. We couldn't give the same example for women in terms of what to wear to come to mass. Well, no, not suit and ties, but I'm thinking the most formal gown that we own. It would actually be inappropriate true, if true. we showed up to mass in our most formal gown that we have. So wear something that's going to be appropriate for mass, but make it a formal occasion. Make it something that's, you know, extra special. Make it something, you know, like the Sunday best. What happened to our Sunday best? So at Virtue Ministry, go and check out our Sunday best posts. We share different posts, Sunday um, best rest and worship suggestions and ideas. So you can go and check out lots of different things there. But there are also plenty of people on the online world who do dress attire for women and give examples of what that can look like for Sunday Best as well. So go and do a little bit of research yeah, if you're not yeah. sure about what that could look like. But it's just about putting a bit more effort in than what you would if you were just going to the grocery store or going out for a coffee with a friend. Yep. Just yep. a little bit more effort. Interestingly, though, modesty would be opposed to something like singularity. This is why, as you say, appropriateness, right? It would be inappropriate for you to go and wear your wedding dress to mass. Right. Right. For you know, or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, I once had a couple of seminarians walk in to class wearing a suit and bow tie. And I immediately... What? <laughs> and I... Now, now they actually did me a favour that day because I was, I was giving a retreat to a group of nuns and I had to preach on singularity. I'm like, what's an example of singularity? In all these two, I'm like... Well, that was very helpful. <laughs> Get out and change now. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so... <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, so um, anything which draws attention to oneself in an inordinate fashion is contrary to modesty. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, but, but something which highlights the beauty of the person. Yep. Now yep. But not just the beauty of the person, because the, per the way that we dress when we come for mass should also say, I know that I'm here for a particular reason and okay. I know what that reason I is. I understand the weight of the reason yeah. that I'm here and I'm showing that with the attire that I've chosen yeah, 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 to be yeah. here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. So there you go. There's a few thoughts on the 
virtue of modesty in terms of what it, the virtue means in terms of the disposition of the heart. We've looked a little bit on what, um, what we see in scripture as well as some practical ways, some couple of things that we might be able to think about moving into the future of how, especially when we show up for Sunday worship, yeah, paying a little bit extra attention and putting a little extra effort in yeah. and a challenge from Padre for the gentleman to wear ties to the yes. next Sunday worship. <laughs> so one of the things that we might do then is just to, to, to consider how am I actually engaging in the modest thought, action and attire? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think you said before, Padre, that you're going to send a video of how to tie a tie for yes, all the gentlemen who might be. To tie a tie, I will show you how to tie a tie. <laughs> so you've got no excuse. You've got no excuse. <laughs> Love it. We've got a book study coming up in a few weeks' time. So if you haven't already, please make sure you go and purchase Searching for and Maintaining Peace, a small treatise of peace of heart by Father Jacques Philippe. Um, we will be mo- moving through those in three episodes with a fourth episode available on Patreon. So make sure you go and grab that. And we'll also have a special ep- segment for Patreon for after this episode as well. So go and check out that too. Excellent. Before we go, a truth, beauty and goodness, Padre. Yes. Uh, the relics of Carlo Acutis came to the cathedral. Mm. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just give us a sense of relics for anyone who's a bit uh, like, huh? So we, uh, in, in, in the church, uh, we believe that the body is, uh, is actually really important. It's a part of the person. Uh, and so um, we, we, even in, in, in death, we, we place great weight on the body. It's why we, we bury it. We give a Christian burial. And and, um, and we believe that the body is, is actually a sacrament, that it's a visible sign of, of, of the person. And it maintains that. It maintains that, that, that sort of sacramental reality. So uh, we, 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 for our saints, we'll often have a little, um, maybe a part of their hair or a part of their clothing or a part of part of something that speaks to, to, to them, to their, 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 their body, as a sign of them, uh, and, and one which, which uh, can be really quite miraculous. Uh, you know, these, these relics have been known by God's grace, not because they're magical no, items, yeah. but because they are sacramental. They, they, they point us to, uh, to God and, and, and they point us to that particular saint to ask for his intercession or her intercession. Um, and, uh, and so they... they uh, we, we, we take these relics as a, as a means of, of um, asking for that saint's intercession uh, and, and a means by which the saint can, can be a, um, uh, a source of, of God's grace to us. Mm. Uh, so uh, it, it maintains that sort of sacramental um, uh, dimension. Yeah, yeah, so that's our relic. Mm. Yeah, so these relics are in town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Uh, what about yourself? Uh, I went op shopping recently with a friend. Um, another friend of mine had just let us know that there was a church up the road who had set up an op shop for a few hours on a Saturday. So we went to go and check it out. What I was really pleased by wasn't the clothing that was there. What was really touching is that they've actually set up a station for like tea and coffee, morning tea all donated so anyone could go in and sit down have a cuppa and if you weren't sitting there the people who were like taking care of the op shop at that time there's about four or five volunteers they would come up to you and find you and ask you can we make you a coffee can we make and we've got like a proper coffee machine like we're gonna make it can we make you a chai latte can we make you a hot chocolate like whatever you want we'll make it for you it's on us which was just so sweet it was just an added extra touch to their hospitality but then as I was speaking with the pastor the pastor had also said to me that they'd just come back from speaking with someone who had said to them how special this was and this was the only place that they felt safe that to me was just like wow look at the extra effort that this particular church has gone to to open up their doors to anyone yes they've got an op shop component to it but they've taken that extra step of hospitality Um, so that was just yeah that was a really special special moment to see God's goodness working through through these people Mm. well thanks so much for joining us for this week's episode we will catch you again next week but until then you know I love and grace